guys, the final reveal. Here we go. I'm gonna show you guys the shop. It's completely done. We're so excited about it. So as most of you guys know, we received the 6.0 Power Stroke from my wife's father and it was deeded to us, so it's our truck now. When I was going through his barn, I found an American flag underneath his um, workbench and I took it. Unopened? Unopened, flag. yeah. I put it in my toolbox for now, but I figured this would be a great tribute to Hammer. Um, he passed away a few months ago. So we're gonna go ahead and take this flag that I pulled out of his barn, and we're gonna put it in this new garage today. And then once we're done with that, guys, we're gonna show you guys everything. We're, the full review of the shop, and what a game changer this is. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right, let's do this. All right, here it is. Pretty nice flag. There's a nice flag. Yeah. Right here, center, right here. Is this good right here? Yes. What do you think? The flag? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I know it's not a huge flag, but it was in his barn and, you know, it was his. Mm -hmm. So I think it's only fitting that we put the American flag on the wall in memory of Hammer. Actually, here's, uh, here's a picture of his wife in the truck and the trophy. Thing I'd like to add to this video before we get started. If you guys entered in for the 54 inch, actually that four wheeler is in the way. Can you move the kid quad out of the way for me, please? This thing is awesome. I love it. I'm on that thing more than the kids are. know we shut down the contest the 15th of this month I will be announcing the winner tonight on this video so make sure you watch till the very end and can't wait to share with you guys the winner somebody's gonna be pretty excited to own this thing by the way we're gonna go ahead and throw this big decal the lift superstore on my hoist because it's decal right there, straight. looks good yes. looking good awesome so before it looked like this. And right now it looks like this. So in a previous video, you guys probably, unless you missed out on it, we did a teardown video and demo you know, reconstruction. A lift kit yeah. on the barn and all yeah. that other extra stuff. Tear it down to make it better kind of thing. Right. And this is Todd right here. I'm sure you've seen him before on the channel. Uh, not only are we building his Denali 2021 L5P Duramax, which is gonna be a beast by the way, it's a dually. We're gonna be doing a lift kit on it, uh, tuned and deleted. It's just gonna be a monster. We're gonna put a bigger turbo in it. I'm gonna talk too much about it. So we'll stop there. In your profession, you actually do this for a living. I'm gonna have you explain exactly what we did, mm -hmm. you know, how we did this. And um, I guess you guys need to see this because I'm pretty pumped, man. It really is gonna help my livelihood a lot. And no more pulling transfer cases on the cold ground with no hoist, so this is gonna be good. Shout out to Frelick Brothers Construction in Lennon, Michigan. Here's his phone number if you guys are interested in reaching out to him. Guys, definitely reach out to him if you guys wanna do some awesome construction to your house. Really anything dealing with a hammer and a nail, right? Absolutely, wow. absolutely. All right, so yeah, here we are after, uh, I don't know, an extra six weeks or so waiting on different products and things to get here, but uh, initial build came down and went back up really quick. It was just mostly waiting on uh, some garage doors to show up, and then uh, I guess we added a few twisted turns along the way here as uh, things came together, but uh, in the end, man, it's a good-looking barn. I should say shop, good-looking shop. I think uh, you're gonna enjoy this. Well, I have to remind you guys, initially, Todd and I were standing here talking back in January or December or something. I can't remember. It was cold. Yeah. And he brought his fancy new truck out to show me. He just got it from the dealership. It was super nice. And as we're here, kind of talking about what we do, you know, and uh, I'm like, well, since you do this for a living and I do diesel work, I can help him out on his truck if you can kind of help me out on price a little bit, of course. Um, just a little bit because the price of lumber is extremely expensive right now. But we were talking about my current building i wanted to put a hoist in it we want to do some weird scissor truss nest with it with the you know because it's only how tall is that building 
It was like, eight and a half feet tall is what it was. The trusses would have been set, it was like eight foot five inches to be exact from floor to ceiling in the yeah. original building. Yeah, in order to get a hoist in there, I would need at least 14, actually 13 foot of clearance from the ground to the bottom of the truss. And obviously in that garage, even doing some weird scissor truss action in order to put a big hoist in there, it still wouldn't have worked out. Even if it did, I'd only be able to get a truck up probably about two, maybe two, three feet off the ground. Right, yeah, I think we could get a total of about 11 feet or so in there scissor trussing things out, and that's only going to get a truck that's already about six and a half, seven feet tall, a little ways off the ground. And that's with a two post with no cross member on the top. Right, right. So it was still going to be tight. You would have still had to sit on a bucket or something to get under the truck, but that wasn't going to be worth the, the hassle and the expense to, to just go that route. You're so right. it, it made sense just to go all the way. If you're going to do it, just make it where it's, go big or it's go usable. Home. Right. So the biggest reason why we built this building, guys, is because we wanted to install this right here. But while we were at it, we decided to add some final touches. So let's talk about that really quickly. So we did talk about the Lyft Superstore or the TLS 12K vehicle hoist that is going to be used, and we're really pumped about it. We also went with the most insane, the brightest. This is what I did, guys. I went to Home Depot, and I talked to the guy there, and I said, I want the biggest, baddest, brightest, most expensive lights you have to light up a barn or a shop. I, so I went nuts, and I went with eight. I know the door's open, but I went with eight, eight foot, two row LED lights. Uh, I believe they're 9,600 lumens. So times eight, I'm not a mathematician, but you leave it in the comments, guys, it's a lot. It's super bright, especially at nighttime. When you turn these lights on, it is blinding. I, I like, if you walked outside and it's pitch black and you walked in here with these lights on, it's just absolutely blinding. It's gonna help me with videoing. So Todd, talk to me about this white stuff on the walls here because uh, I'm noticing as we're talking right now, it's just reflecting, all these lights are just reflecting off these walls. Right, well, hey, if you want a brighter, cleaner shop, that's the way to go. And obviously, with the price of lumber materials these days, especially OSB, to cover your walls with OSB and then you got to paint it was going to be more expensive than just going with a nice steel wall, which gives you a nice, bright, clean surface, easy to wipe down, and looks good. Yeah, it should be good for videoing as well. I guess the drawback is you get a little echo in here, though, don't you, with all this tin on the wall? Yes. Yeah. I guess don't go wrapping on that uh, diesel too hard in here now because that'll make you go deaf. Oh, it, not only that, but if I do that, blowing any black smoke whatsoever. Oh, by the way, we got some goodies from Boost Auto Parts. Blowing some black smoke in, in here, is, I, these walls are going to be destroyed. And I don't have a ventilation system in here as of yet. Now, behind these white walls right here, we did spray foam insulation. I don't know if we can pick that up. Here we go. Here's some spray foam right there. But all four corners. All four walls, I would say, is completely covered in spray foam. The goal here, guys, is to light a match in here and stay warm in the wintertime because we do live in Michigan. So I guess one of the other extra upgrades we did on this barn is with these garage doors. We did insulated doors to actually help uh, keep some of the heat in if you're going to go with the spray foam and everything. Obviously, you want an insulated garage door. And then over here on this shorter eight-foot tall door, we went ahead with a high lift door track to get that all the way up to this 14 foot ceiling so you didn't have tracks hanging out there about halfway up. So you got good clearance on that side. And then over here with this taller door, we went ahead and did a, a modern garage door opener, which are really nice. They take up very little room, nothing sticks out into your ceiling space, and they're super quiet. I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing up. I don't know how well it'll show up on the video, but. You know, for, for being as tall as this garage door is, it's crazy how quiet it is going down. Absolutely. It's, it's the first one that we've had put up like that with that side mount garage door opener. But yeah, it's just whisper quiet. It's nice. You don't have the noise from the chain clanking and everything. So yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. And of course, it has some Bluetooth capabilities so you can sync it up to your phone and open and close that thing when you're not home even. So to the powers that be that run this great nation, um, it is extremely hard nowadays to find anything, any sort of supplies whatsoever, let alone that's on the market at this point or available. Yeah. So unfortunately, we have the old ratty door back there. It's still good, it still works, but it's not insulated. So it's not really gonna do what we're trying. It serves zero purpose right now. So I decided to order another door, which of course is gonna take weeks to get here. Actually, this 12 foot door right here, actually both of them, I believe we were six weeks out when we ordered them. Guys, okay, so on to the other side of the garage. I'll keep wanting to say barn. I know it's a barn, but we call garage. It a shop. It's well, a shop now. It's a shop, yeah. yeah. 
We'll call it a shop. It's too big to be a garage. And it is a shop because it has, it has a vehicle hoist in it now. Absolutely. So. That's all that needs to qualify. <laughs> so we've come out off the building about 16 feet from the outside wall of the building to the outside of these posts. We've got 16 feet there and 40 foot deep. 40 foot deep. That's yes. quite, a, quite a hike there. And it looks larger in person. If you guys were here in person, I think you're really going to see the depth of this structure. It's gigantic. The biggest reason why we went with this is because I want to put my camper in here in the winter time to keep the snow off the roof of it. I, it's a brand new camper, so I want to keep it nice. I want to protect the investment, and I think this was a good idea. On top of that, I'm hoping to have extra room on the sides, so it looks really good. Um, Todd, I really like that your guys came through and did this. Most people don't do that. The white metal on the ceiling it right, looks right. good so that was a bit of an afterthought but yeah that gives it a nice finishing touch and i guess the whole reason for doing that is when you build these awnings on the sides of these shops the birds love to nest in here and so this helps keep the birds out of the rafters and obviously if you're parking trucks or whatever in here and you have a bird up above you've got a mess to clean up and so that kind of defeats the purpose this keeps the weather off and the bird poo off and it gives it that wow factor too. I mean, the uh, uh, curb appeal, pulling up into this house, seeing this structure just looks beautiful. It really does. I, I like that you, your guys were able to actually trim that out um, to make it match the building and it just really came together. We'll get the tractor. Yeah, I'll go get it. All right. So what I thought is pretty interesting is we still have a few sheets left of this metal steel here. I think we have about five or six. These sheets right here are about 35 bucks a piece. Can you believe it? I think we're gonna be using this for our awning, if I'm not mistaken, in the back. So we do have to get it out of the driveway finally so I actually can park right here, which is gonna be good. So we were able to fit the camper underneath the awning as expected, just for now, a little crooked, but considering this is a 40 foot length wall and this camper is a 36 foot camper if I'm not mistaken, we still have plenty of room in the back. Pretty cool, I still have some room to put more stuff back here. But guys, welcome to the new shop, I'm really happy about it. I'm just going to say it, I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking it, why didn't you just go bigger? Only two real reasons for that. One would be that I live in the great state of Michigan where it's cold like half the year. I won't be spending as much money hitting the shop. It makes perfect sense. The other one, of course, is cash, man. I mean, if I was to go increase square footage, well, A, the property tax would jack up, of course. And then B, with the economy and the way it is right now, I'd be nearly paying triple what it would cost to increase the size of this building. So it really wouldn't make a lot of sense. But in the meantime, throwing an awning out there, throwing an awning in the back, I'll have the main frame in order to expand out later. So that's what I'm gonna do. Some of you guys have been following me for a few years now, watching my how-to tutorial videos, um, just doing simple YouTube videos in my garage. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's always really dark in here. Look at it now, isn't this great? This is so cool. It's finally happened. I'm hoping this is really gonna help out the content, make it a little more streamlined for you guys, make it not so dark. We're gonna go ahead and start getting back on schedule again. I'm gonna start posting my three videos a week like I have been. I'm gonna start dragging those projects out of the back of the grass, out in the back of my property. For example, the Dodge Cummins, the LMM, Wife Max, all those that I haven't touched in a while. We're gonna go ahead and bring these things back in here and we're gonna go ahead and plug away at it. That's it guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Make sure you follow as we continue to build these vehicles and have so much fun on the channel. We'll see you on the next one, stay tuned. So thank you so much for watching until the end. I have the name of the winner right now. I'm gonna attempt to call this person and hopefully they answer. Sometimes things don't work out as well as they do on camera, but you know, who knows, he may answer, he may not. But we're gonna try. His name is Nate Perkins from Great Falls, Montana. Congratulations, man, you won the 54 inch Snap-on Toolbox. I'm gonna be shipping this bad boy to your house, so this is awesome. I'm gonna call him right now. Hopefully he answers, we'll see what happens.
All right guys, so off camera, I texted him hoping he'd call back and he did. And I was outside doing some work and wasn't able to answer my phone. So I'm gonna call him back. He just texted me, so let's try this again. Although I'm sure he knows he won after I text him, right? What's up? Hey, is this Nate? It is. Hey, it's Truckmaster Josh on YouTube. How's it going, man? What's going on, bro? You won. Congratulations. Yep, you won the toolbox, the snap-on. Uh-huh, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, do you watch the channel regularly, or? Um, I just found it recently, and then uh, the lifted four caught my eye because I have a 2001 7.3 Power Stroke, um, same body style with 35s on it, and so I wanted. To, I was just curious, so I watched uh, a couple videos, and you were doing the giveaway, and I'm a sucker for them. Probably <laughs> spent way too much on you know T-shirts and stuff, trying to win trucks, and but I'm like. You know, I need some AR-15 uh, mag holders. Yep. So I popped those and... You know what's funny? That I saw that in your order. They actually shut me down on Facebook because I tried to promote the giveaway on Facebook. And I just left the link in there. And apparently Facebook went to my website and noticed that I was selling the magazine holders. And they said I can't sell weapons parts, even though they're not weapons. Wow. Yeah, so... Yeah, a bunch of liberals. Anyways, Nate, hey, congratulations, brother, and thank you so much for all of your support, and, you know, it's just, it's awesome. And again, I'm glad it's going to someone deserving, because obviously you do need it, but uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing shipped out to you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and, uh, you know, I never won anything in my whole life, so I'm definitely going to use it. Um, thank you so much. I'm, I'm in shock. Hey, no problem, man. This is why I love giving stuff away. It's just, it's cool to be able to give back to y'all, so... All right, dude, take it easy. Thanks. All right, man, thanks. Bye.